ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Driven Wild. Today we are talking about my car was stolen and the government is looking for me. So a while back, my car was stolen during one of my DoorDash deliveries. And as the whole situation became a fiasco in itself, it actually became much more spicy. Kind of in a good way, though. So with that said, we are talking about how my car was stolen, why the government is looking for me for me or specifically one department within the government and everything in between. So with that said, let's get started. How my car was stolen. So in 2021, I was on DoorDash doing normal DoorDash things and I had been in Florida for a few months now and I was finally getting used to how things were going. So I went into McDonald's to pick up an order and I thought I'll run in and out and get the order, which of course with how McDonald's discriminates against its gig workers, they decided to not even start the order. So I had a a significant wait time. I wasn't getting much on other platforms, so I decided to wait. During that time, my car got stolen. I dealt with the whole fiasco of dealing with 911, the police, and how bad all of them were at their jobs, and was able to get my car back in a couple of days. The story became more complex and dramatic with the tow yard and everybody else, but I already made a video on that whole story when it happened back in 2021. So to make sure we're not overdoing it this video. I will leave a video on that subject in the description. Feel free to check that out. It wasn't fun at the time, but it's funny looking back now. The Department of Corrections fiasco. So I touched on this in a previous video, but it wasn't resolved yet, or it kind of still isn't, but it is at the same time. So let's break this down. It is now 2024. I have been expanding my gig portfolio and building businesses that can really help gig workers diversify their gig portfolio and develop exit strategies. Meanwhile, I get a letter about a case that I was victim to, and they gave me an email and a phone number to call. I called the probation officer in question that sent me the letter, and honestly, I was a little confused. They explained to me that it was about my stolen car, but that was three years ago at that point, so I didn't really expect to hear anything from them. That said, they said they had some checks for me from the person who stole my car. They said they need me to go down there and show my ID and whatnot to make sure that they're sending it to the right person. First off, when I got to this office, which was the Department of Corrections, the front desk lady was basically not really paying attention to me. They tried to have me register as an offender of some kind. On one hand, I get it. The person who was at the front desk probably deals with this kind of stuff for most of the day. From her perspective, I was somebody who was claiming to not be an offender and as an annoyed character standing before her, trying to plead not guilty, and she was giving me the same lines she would do to somebody who was supposed to fill out this form. But on the other hand, when the probation officer said that I was there for this reason specifically and to not treat me that way? No, because she stepped out to get a drink when I told her I was going to be there in 20 minutes. Seriously, I told you I was on my way there and your first thought was... Ah! in like 20 minutes. How about I go out and get a drink from the store next door? The annoying part was that I didn't have her contact info to contact her mobile phone and her business line was a landline to an office in the back. I basically had to go home, get the email that was on the letter, threaten her, with a lawsuit just to get this done. Yes, that is what it would take for her to do her job. She was not happy and neither was I. Anyway, I got there. They basically took a photocopy of my ID because they had the wrong address. Turns out the address they had was to my grandmother's condo across the street from mine. There was a period of time where my parents were staying in my condo while their condo was under construction. So in the interim, I stayed over there. So so that way we could transition later, which was basically a couple months from that point. But all said and done, we got the confusion sorted out and they said to expect the money in the mail. 
It wasn't much, but apparently $246.20 that I didn't have before is now in my pocket. It looks like there is still more to come too, but I don't really know what the details of that is. But I'll tell you what, it's solid timing too. There are a few businesses that I'm currently working on and I could use the extra capital. But one of those businesses is my exclusive Discord community for gig workers looking to expand their knowledge and expertise for those in their self-employment and entrepreneurial journeys. I partnered with Jeffrey Lago, the founder of Food Fetch, to bring you some of the most exclusive benefits based on your personal needs as a gig worker. Exclusive professional opportunities and gig postings, more live streams and high level professionals in our industry, educational systems to help build your own dispatch company and scalable opportunities. Whether you're a gig worker looking for more opportunities and to earn on other platforms, or if you're looking for an exit strategy because the gig economy is an income bridge to what would be a long-term goal and would like to see something with more growth and much more more scalable, we have something here for you. You can access all of them with all the inclusive benefits of each tier for one low price. Check the link in the description to sign up and get started in making the most amount of money in the least amount of time in the safest possible ways. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you on the Discord. And we'll see you guys there. Peace.